Hello there and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is John. I am Orphan Car Garage and I'm located in Abington. That's in Massachusetts. We're about 30 minutes or so south of Boston. I got another really cool full-size GM wagon to profile for you today. Uh, about a week or two ago, I profiled a cousin of this car, the Chevy Caprice. This one's a couple notches up on the GM ladder to Buick. This is a Buick estate wagon from 1990, which will be the final year for this body style, this traditional full-size square body-ish station wagon from GM. The estate wagon nameplate goes all the way back to 1940 with General Motors, and it came in and out of favor with GM Buick in particular for many many years and this was the final year for the estate nameplate i believe 1990. no longer in 1990 was it labeled an electra or la saber it was simply labeled estate wagon all estate wagons came standard with wood grain but you could get a delete on the wood grain as this car has or got um, and you could get a credit on your window sticker for a wood grain delete, which obviously the first owner chose. Now, the reason the first owner did that is because we're told that the first owner of this wagon was a funeral home. This vehicle was used by a funeral home up until 2012 to transport its clients to um, receptions, cemeteries, funerals, etc., etc. And we know funeral homes take very good care of their cars for the most part, and this car is no exception. Of course, it's black. This is a repaint of the original black. It's, it's apparent to us that this car has been repainted, but nicely done. A high-end driver quality paint job. I'd say I'd give it a seven and a half out of 10. Very, very presentable. You'll notice right off the bat that probably when they painted the car, the rocker panel moldings are missing. The studs are still there, but the rocker panel moldings are missing, presumably not put back on when the car was painted for one reason or another. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. We've got the optional road wheels here that are in really good shape all the way around. Some very recent white wall tires all the way around. Some nice chrome, that rear step, really cool lift gate that we'll get to in a minute. Very, very nice chrome. The filler on this car, as opposed to the Chevy that I profiled a couple weeks ago, is in better condition, but not perfect. I'm assuming this is a common soft spot on these cars, but in definitely better condition on this Buick than it was on that Caprice Classic that we profiled. There's another wheel for you. Really good shape on these road wheels. Dual mirrors. Uh, lastly, that right front wheel. Uh, as far as exterior flaws go, there's few, but there are a couple that I want to point out. Really across, across the front here, we've got nice bezels and a nice grill. That Buick hood ornament's in great shape. Nice clear headlights, directional lights, and again, really nice chrome. But again, the GM fillers come rearing their ugly head, and it looks to me like maybe some repair work was done here prior to painting. So cracked filler panels were repaired amateurly and then painted over. I wanted to show you that on both sides. So those fillers definitely have some issues, but uh, they are in place and presentable for a driver quality wagon such as this. This is not a collector quality vehicle by any chance, by any chance or stretch of the imagination. But what this is, is a really nice turnkey driver for someone that's a fan of these cars. Over here, you'll see a couple little scratches that I mean to be expected. One more there on the passenger's, the driver's side rear door. Looks like something was rubbing up against it, maybe in a garage. Really nice glass. It's fall and the leaves are falling as I speak. So you can see those leaves. Car's been out here for about a half an hour. Normally those would not be there, I promise you. We'll get inside it now. Very Buick all the way around the Buick came standard with a lot of power features that some of the lesser GM products didn't have, like the Caprice. We got a power seat, both driver and passenger. It works. On All the functions seem to work on the driver's side, but the passenger side has some issues with some of its functions. I believe forward and backward on the passenger side is in op. You can hear the motor clicking, but the tilt features do work, if I remember correctly. Another issue the driver's seat has here is that this recliner doesn't work. It feels like it's just jammed, and that seat is kind of in a permanent, somewhat reclined position. I'm six feet, and I'm comfortable at it, 
but if you're much shorter than that, it's probably gonna to be too much of a recline for you. This could probably be repaired or at least moved permanently to a more upright position, but I wanted to point that out. We can't get this recline to work. Got some original carpeted floor mats, which the driver's side obviously shows some wear. Power locks that operate. The best part of this wagon, just 43,448 miles. That's legitimate miles. We have a Carfax that backs that up. It's a two owner vehicle until, two, uh, until 2012, it was owned by the funeral home. And then 2012, it was purchased by its most recent owner. And from 2012 to 2024, just over a thousand miles have been put on this car. That's it. It was owned by a collector, purchased by a collector from the funeral home. Really, really nice. That crushed floor, velour, maroon, reddish interior, that uh, typical wood grain applique on the dashboard that Buick was so known for. The air conditioning in this car does perform flawlessly, as does the radio. The power rear window works beautifully. All the power windows go up and down, no, no problem. The headliner is in great shape. Very typically, you see the headliners start to fail in these 80s and 90s GM cars. It's in really, really good condition. Again, the seating is really, really nice. The back seat we know have, has been used, at least by that funeral home, but kept very, very tidy. Really, really, really nice back here. And of course, you've got an ashtray. Got an ashtray and power window for the rear passengers as well. Really nice presentation overall. The best part of any full-size station wagon, of course, is that cool third seat i believe this was standard equipment by 1990 on this car you guys can correct me if i'm wrong and yes it's vinyl they were all vinyl in the third seat presumably for children for easy cleanup uh unlike the chevy that we profiled these plastic panels are in terrific condition the chevy had some some fading and some cracking in these panels which is typical to see this car is really really nice panels on both sides and of course an ashtray for the third seat passenger, which I get a big kick out of. Nice carpeting back here. No matter how much you clean, you can still find something. It never fails. Nice rear panel. This electric window goes up and down, no problem. And of course, we've got a defroster there as well. Real classy looking car. Uh, Buick built just under 9,000 of these for 1990. I believe exactly 8,999 8 um, were built for 1990. It's final year for this body style. I believe the Roadmaster came out the next year with that new body style. Decent overall outer appearance here. I will show you the right rear quarter panel, which is a common soft spot on these wagons. Your spare tire well is in here and we've got some corrosion there right there it's really the worst part of the car it's on the passenger side and that's your spare tire well uh, presumably there's, there's also some amateur repair under there i have pictures of that on my website presumably the bottom of that well must have corroded and the body shop maybe when they did the paint application on this car repaired it but they repaired it crudely i'm not gonna lie there are pictures of that from a lift on my website another portion of the undercarriage of this car that was repaired was the left front floor there is a sheet metal patch panel on the left front floorboard the frame of the car is extremely clean and solid but there is some light scale and corrosion on several of the undercarriage components this car until 2012 again owned by a funeral home so people do pass away in the winter so this car was used on new england roads during the winter months cleaned and garaged i'm sure after every use but it still takes its toll and the undercarriage of this car definitely shows that it's a new england car that doesn't mean it's a basket case because it's not we've seen far 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 worse but again this is not a collector quality vehicle just a really cool vintage station wagon that could be used as a daily driver very 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 presentable under the hood of this Buick, as opposed to the Chevy that we profiled, is a 307 V8. The Chevy would have had a 305 in it, or did have a 305 in it. This is the 307, which I believe is borrowed from Oldsmobile. We're going to fire that up for you right now. 
runs extremely well. I've driven this car actually quite a bit and I'm very, very impressed with its road quality, road manners. Because it helps to have the key out of my pocket. There we go. Two sets of original GM keys too. That works very well. All the power windows work as they're supposed to. They all go up fairly not down and up fairly smoothly. And that rear window, we'll look at it there through the, goes down. Works fine. That's a must in these cars. Very, very comfortable seating in these. A true Buick, a true road car. Very, very smooth and quiet. Hood for you. Wrap this up. These cars always run so nice. Parts availability will be endless. Right off the shelf with the local O'Reilly's. That nice smooth running 307 VA. Very, very clean, well mannered engine bay. No severe leaks to speak of. We did notice some dampness on the rear differential, but it's probably been like that for 20 years and probably will be fine for 20 more. I wouldn't mess with it. It's not leaving any spots on the ground, but there is some dampness on that rear differential. Fix it if you'd like, but honestly, I don't think I would bother unless it became an issue and I doubt it will. It's probably been like that for years, typical GM. So there you have it, our 1990 Buick Estate Wagon with just 43,000 original miles. Really clean, nice driver. Again, not a collector quality vehicle. If that's what you're looking for, you're gonna probably wanna move on from this. But if you are a collector and want a really cool car just to drive around with and use for daily use, there's a lot of life left in this car. We have it here available at Orphan Car Garage for just $8,900, just $8,900 for this really cool, black 1990 Buick Estate. Give me a call, 508-954-8090. My name is John. Check this car out on my website. We have a full gallery of photos of the car there, underneath included, orphancargarage.com. Of course, subscribe and like to us here. Like us here on YouTube. Find us on Facebook, yada, yada, yada. We thank you again for all the support. And until the next one, which is going to be soon, we are, we are cranking them out this, this last few months. We'll see you down the road. Thank you.